Uh, Dr. Ravi Batra on the line with us, the professor of economics at Southern Methodist University, author of Greenspan's Fraud and the New Golden Age. You can read all about it at his website, R-A-V-I-B-A-T-R-A, RaviBatra.com. And uh, Ravi, you were saying that, uh, just to recap, that uh, about 70% of our economy is basically consumer-driven, uh, workers earning wages and buying things, and uh, about 15% of our economy is banker-driven, basically banks lending money and making things happen. And uh, we're putting trillions of dollars into that 15%, and we're ignoring the 70%. By the way, I wanted to uh, ask you, I thought that government accounted for something over 20% of our GDP. Uh, where does that fit into that, or are you talking about the non-governmental part of the economy? Well, see, the government spending is quite important, uh, uh, but see, we have to take out taxes from government spending. Uh huh. Okay. The net effect. So it washes it out. Uh, uh, when, when there is not that much deficit, uh, right now, of course, uh, the government spending is extremely high, and the deficit is about 10 to 12 percent of GDP. Uh, but uh, in, in in normal years, it's mostly consumer spending and. Uh, and investment spending, right. that's, uh, that's the... Okay, so your first, your first suggestion was we need to stimulate consumer spending. Let's give a 20% 20, 20 tax rebate to anybody who buys an American-made car tomorrow morning. Yeah, and made in America. It doesn't matter if it is made by Toyota or Honda, but it has to be made on the American soil. And now, now, what about, what about the, the Toyota or Honda cars that are, made, quote, made in America, end quote, but the engine comes from uh, Japan, the, all the electronics come from China, the, I mean, you know, in some of these cars, 20, 30, 40, in some of them, 50, 60, 70 percent of the parts are not made in the United States. Should there be some I think, threshold? I think that's also the case with GM and Ford cars. They are also importing a lot of parts from other yes. countries. And uh, the main thing is, if, if assembly is taking place here, even the assembly in the United States uh, requires a lot of jobs yeah. and, and parts. Uh, so I would uh, say uh, at this point I don't want to raise the prospect of protectionism. Right. I'll say fine. Any car made on the American soil, uh, if, 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 the, if the person buys it, he gets a 20% tax credit for that. Right. And a tax credit, for our listeners who are not familiar with the term, is where the government basically writes you a check. This is not a tax deduction. This doesn't mean that you can take this off your income taxes. It's actually a government su a direct subsidy to the taxpayer. Uh, right, and it doesn't even have to be income tax. If you pay any, any kind of tax, Social Security or any other kind, you are entitled to it. Because That's right. there, are lo there are a lot of people who, are, who don't pay income taxes. They're, they're too poor to pay them. Right, and, but you would still get a check from the government for 20% of the cost of the car. 20% of the cost of the okay. car. Number one. Number one. And the second one, I would call an international conference among like this G20 that you, you just mentioned. Yeah. And I will explain to them the main cause of the problem everywhere in the world is the rising uh, gap between the productivity and wages. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we need to raise wages all over the world. But if wages rise in the U.S. and not have any, anywhere else, then we are at a disadvantage. So this international conference should aim at raising the minimum wage everywhere in the world. You realize this is the exact opposite of what the World Bank, the IMF, Milton Friedman, even Thomas Friedman, um, you know, all of these guys have been promoting for the last 30 years, which is to suppress workers' wages because they say that that leads to what they call wage inflation and thus general inflation. And, and you know, and the result is not a surprise. surprise what That's we're right. right now. And it brought us right where we are. <laughs> exactly. And so... I would call an international conference and say, okay, here we, here we are, we, we need to raise the minimum wage everywhere in the world. Now, the traditional economies and perhaps uh, China and all, all many other countries will say, no, we don't want to raise wages. Then the United States says this, okay, we are going to devalue our dollar. Right. You, you don't want to uh, raise wages? Fine. Uh, we will take unilateral action. We will devalue the dollar so that we can we don't import more than we export. We will have right. balanced free trade, but not deficit trade that we have right now. So you're, you, you would drive trade policy with monetary policy over the short term? That's right. And, and I would, uh, because in the end, we have to raise wages everywhere in the world. But uh, people, even when, when I explain my logic to them, and they come to agree with my logic, they kind of sort of resistance, to the, the, they are res resistant to the idea that the wage should go up uh, so that consumer demand rises. I don't right. understand that anyway, but that's, that's, that's
that will be the uh, would that not violate the WTO uh, uh, would that not be considered a, a form of, of uh, ex ex export support import suppression no it won't because everybody else is doing it I see okay. <laughs> China Japan yeah. well, and China's been doing it forever forever yeah. who is not doing it they, are, they have, they, they have the, the, their currency undervalued so we will say fine you do it and we will do the same thing we will just fix a low value of the dollar with respect to your currency then you do, do you decide and if suppose you start retaliating then we are going to impose quotas right okay I, we have to take a break here I, I want to ask you when we come back from the break what would that mean to the average American you know, in terms of the purchasing power, don't we become poorer as a nation? And then I got a whole board full of calls here. People from all over the country want to call and ask you questions. Uh, so we will be back. We're talking with Dr. Ravi Batra, uh, the uh, acclaimed, internationally acclaimed economist, uh, the, the, our official guru here at the Tom Hartman program. We'll be right back. RaviBatra.com. <laughs>